What do we learn from Ralph Ranić's first game as Manchester United manager? So Ranić set up the side in an unchanged starting 11 from the game against Arsenal just a few games earlier, carrying on the use of a 4-2-2-2 system, which Carrick had used previously. So this most likely means that Ranić had some sort of influence on Carrick's system and lineup for the Arsenal game. But before I go into more detail, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfifa.com. I've bought a number of different jerseys from Jersey FIFA and they've all been high quality and at an affordable price. I myself got a Manchester United 2003-2004 Ronaldo shirt from Jersey FIFA and it was high quality and one of my favourite shirts that I currently have. So if you want to check them out, I'll leave them linked in the description below and use code AlantisFootball to get 5% off. So one of the major things that we learn in terms of the tactical setup that we probably already expected was that Manchester United under Ranić are going to be pressing aggressively high up the pitch in that 4 triple 2 shape. Without the ball we saw United counter press frequently with them pressing Palace during their build up phase in their defensive third in that 4-2-2-2 shape with Sancho and Rashford or Fernandes whoever was in that position when the press was initiated sitting centrally in narrow positions in behind the front two creating a rectangle shape with Fred also pushing up from the midfield line to the opposition's deeper midfielder which in this game was Kuyate seeing United committing five players forward to the advanced press in central areas creating almost a 2-3-3-2 pressing shape high up the pitch with the fullbacks also in advanced positions particularly Dalla on the right side being advanced ready to sustain the press if the ball went out to the fullbacks. See the interesting thing about this pressing shape is when the ball is on either side the wide midfielder on the opposite side of the midfield four shifts in field holding a high narrow position as though the two attacking midfielders are playing in an advanced double pivot creating a box shape on either side of the pitch. Now the benefit of this is obviously that it narrows down the passing options that the opposition has with the extra presser being able to pick up the central midfielder on the inside cutting off the opposition's ability to play the ball into him and have him then switch the play. If Jadon Sancho drops into a deeper position next to Fred when the ball is on the right side, this does provide more defensive security in this deeper midfield area. But now United have won this player in the close vicinity of the ball and so the opposition has more passing lanes open, increasing their ability to play out of United's press. United did have success winning the ball back high up the pitch and it was from these situations where they would then look to feed the ball into one of the front four and would have four attackers in advanced central positions. Before I go any further, if you do want exclusive content, make sure you sign up to my Patreon, which will be linked in the description below. For £5 a month, each week you'll get a weekly newsletter where I discuss everything in the world of football from the Premier League to across Europe. you also get an extra Manchester United video each week as well and another exclusive video on a topic voted for by the Patreon. So you'll get two extra videos a week plus a weekly newsletter for £5 a month. And you would of course be helping to support the channel, but just by watching this video all the way through and giving the video a like, that is very much appreciated as well. What we learned from this game was Ranić's willingness to use vertically direct forward passes to transition the attack quickly. Some sides like Leeds and Manchester City have more of a possession oriented approach to attack, as rather than looking for those quick vertical forward passes into the attackers, they may instead look for a sideways or backwards pass to keep the ball and circulate possession, enabling their side to drop into their possession shape which for City is usually the 2-3-5 shape before they then look to break down the opposition's defensive structure. However Ranić's Manchester United side have a much greater willingness to play those direct vertical passes even if it's what you would call a low probability pass relative to a sideways or a backwards pass in the same situation. Ranić wants his side to do this so that the ball spends as little time as possible in the middle and defensive thirds and that United's attackers can receive the ball as the opposition players are scattered from their defensive shape giving United's attackers more space to break into in order to create a chance. To use this kind of shape Ranić obviously needs attackers who have a combination of pace off the ball movement, ball carrying ability, vision and a great weight of pass around the box as well as good finishing ability along with the ability to carry out pressing instructions in order to get the best out of the Gagan or counter press whatever you want to call it. But he also needs central midfielders who not only have the ball winning ability and reading of the game to aid the press when out of possession but 
also the vision and passing ability to move the attack forward quickly when they do have possession. In terms of Fred and McTominay, the Brazilian is certainly the better of the two, being able to play those quick vertical passes, with McTominay often playing inaccurate passes when pressurised, or not having the vision and ability to play those passes forward when the opportunity comes along. This is why I think we may see Donny van der Beek come in for McTominay in that double pivot, or even Bruno Fernandes move back alongside Fred in certain games when the opposition don't have the ability to break through the centre of the pitch at pace on the counter, like the likes of Wolves and West Ham can, with Adama Traore, Jared Bowen and Pablo Fornals being excellent progressors of the ball for their side. Fernandes is capable of playing that deeper line playmaker role as he showed in this game with his ability to drop deep and play those long passes in behind Palace's back line to find the runs of Ronaldo and Rashford. Obviously getting an industrious yet creative central midfielder in January would be the best option for United and I am planning to do a specific video on this so make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified when that video comes out. Another thing along with the counter pressing and McTominay's lack of forward passing ability that we learnt from this game was Ranić's potential preference to use Diego Dalot over Wan-Bissaka at right back. See because of Ranić's narrow 4-2-2-2 shape in possession United do lack advanced width and so when they have stable possession in the middle third it will be the fullback's job to push further forward down the line and provide offensive output down the flanks in the form of quick interplay, ball carrying and crossing into the box. Now whilst Wan-Bissaka is certainly the superior defender, Dalot is certainly the better attacker. Dalot has much better technique on the ball, often when Wan-Bissaka receives a ball, he is clunky in possession, taking too long to get the ball out of his feet, and overall slowing down the circulation of the ball forward. Dalot, as he proved against Arsenal in the build-up to Manchester United's second goal, is much better at being able to get the ball out of his feet and play forward passes, and in this game he also showed his crossing ability from deeper positions, putting in a few good crosses, as did tell us from the other side. This deeper crossing ability could be something that Ranjit looks to use a lot more often than Solskjaer did, in a similar way to how we see Liverpool utilise Trent Alexander-Arnold's crossing ability from their right side. Having a player like Dalot in these positions rather than Wan-Bissaka is going to improve the crosses from the right side, creating better aerial chances for Ronaldo. United didn't actually create that many clear-cut chances in this game, if any at all, as they recorded an XG of just 0.87 to Palace's 0.52. In the middle third, we would see Rashford and Ronaldo play as a front two, with Rashford providing movement down the channels to facilitate direct passes in behind, while Sancho and Fernandes played narrow between the lines of the Palace midfield and defence. This meant that in possession United were using a 2-4-2-2 or a 2-4-3-1 when Rashford pulled out to the flank. I do think we will see Ranić consistently use a traditional front two because having two forwards in these advanced areas making runs in behind the back line but also just being in advanced areas is going to aid Ranić's quick direct style of play. We also saw a change in instruction for the centre-backs with them pushing a lot higher up the pitch to condense the play, creating a vertically compact pressing unit, making it harder for Palace to play out. Obviously being this far up the pitch does leave United vulnerable to a counter-attack, particularly if the opposition have a pacey forward who can make runs in behind Maguire and Lindelof, but this didn't happen much in this game. And Lindelof and Maguire did a pretty good job of stepping out from the back line to make interceptions to allow United to win the ball back. But it was Fred who was probably the man of the match in this game. He did score the winner but he did play a huge role in United's attack throughout the game. Whenever United would win the ball in the centre of the pitch, Fred would be sure to play a quick vertical pass forward into Bruno Fernandes and instead of holding on to the ball too long, this quick pass would allow United to transition the attack quickly, getting the ball into either Sancho or Fernandes and have Rashford and Ronaldo making forward runs where Fernandes and Sancho could find them with their passes. I do think that this is the perfect role for Fred. He thrives with the ability of being able to be energetic, go from side to side, almost as a shuttler, closing off the gaps when he needs to and when he wins the ball, he's instructed to play quick vertical passes, which is what he's quite good at. He does struggle when he has to receive the ball with his back to go under pressure from players in his own defensive third. With Ranić's direct style of play, he doesn't really have to encounter this very often, so it is a weakness that is masked by Ranić's style of play. Also, Fred doesn't really have the deep line creative ability of someone like Paul Pogba. So when United do come up against deep defensive units, 
often what has happened throughout the last season or so is that Fred doesn't have the ability to pick the pass into the likes of Fernandes and Rashford between the lines. However, when he's playing in a system where they want to transition the attack quicker, his pass simply has to go straight forward into Fernandes, who's usually in the space in behind the opposition's midfield, rather than a more intricate pass, threading the ball past opposition players into United's attackers in congested spaces. So I think with Fred playing this industrious box-to-box -box central midfielder role, being the player to push out from the midfield line to apply the pressure high up the pitch, this role suits Fred perfectly and I can really see him being given a new lease of life under Ranić. I have got a video coming out soon on how Fred and McTominay's careers could be reignited under Ranić, so make sure you subscribe for that video as it will be out soon. Also sign up to my Patreon if you do want exclusive content, it will help support the channel as well. You'll find that in the description along with some of my other videos that I think you'll like as well.